understood when I would light that lamp was check that wick. And if need be, do what? Trim the wick. <laughs> you, Because you wanted that thing to light up so it would be bright and give off light. Huh? Y'all don't know what I'm getting. See, see, when, see when you didn't go up and grow up, it, it makes it hard to understand what Jesus is saying. But it's real simple because when the globe is clear, you can see bright light. When it's smoked up, the light is dead. Huh? So what is Jesus saying? Clive, there are times when you smoke up your life and people can't see God in you for all that you are doing and saying and thinking. He said you need to trim your wit. So how do you trim your wit? You study the word of God. Because the word of God will cut away everything that will prevent you from letting your light so shine. Huh? God knew what he was talking about when he used that example. So God wants us to understand, not only do you need to keep the wick trimmed so that the light will shine brightly, but when the people in the days of Jesus, see, it was difficult to start that, that, uh, that bowl of oil. So what they would do when they left the house, they would take and put an earthen bowl over top of the light so that the light could continue to shine, you know, be lit. And when it come in, you know, take it off. Well, Jesus said, a man should never hide his light. See, that's what he's referring to, how they would hide the light when they would leave the house. That means you should never go out there and try to be something that God didn't create you to be. God says, don't go out there and be a secret Christian. Huh? Huh? You know what I'm talking about. See, women, y'all can't identify with this. Some men can't. Amen. I'm not saying every man. Because sometimes a married man will pretend he's not married by simply removing his wedding band. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> huh? He's in a particular place so the wedding band goes in the park. Now he's trying to perpetrate being what? Single. But what's the giveaway? The suntan arrest. What a ring you to be. Why your finger white like that? <laughs> oh, yeah, I went swimming up. <laughs> and, and the light didn't get there. Uh, see, sometimes we disguise ourselves. So that, and let me tell you where it most likely happens. On the job. We try to act like we're not Christians on the job because we feel that it is somehow detrimental to our career success. Be quiet on But I'm going to tell you. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me, then I surely will be ashamed of you. Let it shine. Let it shine. You be who God calls you to be. Yes, sir. Huh? Don't try to be something that God. See, so when I'm not, huh? See, see, at home, George, let me tell you what, what June and I do. At home, before we put anything in our mouth to eat, we bow our heads and we lift up the name of Jesus and ask his blessings and demonstrate our thankfulness to him for what he has provided for us. Amen, whatever it might be. But then I go on my job. See, I'm afraid to bless my food in front of others. Hmm? Because I'm afraid somebody will see my head down and say, what are you doing all that? Oh, you one of them. Hmm? I'm telling you how good God is. And God called us to glorify him continuously, whether I'm at home or whether I'm in the workplace. Wherever God allows me to go, I should always let it shine. Let it shine. And so here in Mount Olive, God is calling us and reminding us that we are to let it shine at all times. Let me give you a quick story. I'm going to there was a man one time, his job was to uh, stand out on the railroad track with a lamp so that when the train 
if something had happened, he would signal to the train to slow down because there, there may be some danger ahead. So as it turns out, some tracks had derailed and were out of position. So he was out there trying to warn the train as it approached, you need to slow down and then move on to another track where it was safe. But on this particular night, the man was out there and the man had his lamp. But somehow, the train ended up derailing and going in the ditch. So now, wanting to hold the man liable and accountable for the train accident, they bring him in before the judge. And so the judge asked the man, were you on duty the night that the train derailed? And the man said, yes, sir. All right. The judge asked the man, okay, so you were on duty. Did you have your lamp with you? The man said, yes, sir. Hmm. The judge said, I just got one final question for you. Did you wave the lamp? to get the attention of the train so as to slow down and avoid this accident. And the man said, yes, sir. So they concluded we find no fault in the man. But as the man went home, he told his friends, I am so glad and thankful to God that the judge didn't ask me one more question. <laughs> Was the lamp lit? <laughs> now, now, is the lamp lit? Is it lit? Can others see the light and see clearly the warnings in this world? lest they fall in the ditch. Oh, I know you're on duty. I know you got your lamp with you. And I know you out there waving that lamp with all your might. But is the lamp lit? You see, God wants us to glorify him, which means the light has to shine all the time. And he wants us to glorify him in fellowship, in discipleship, in ministry, and in stewardship. And so I'm going to challenge everyone. The beginning of glorifying God is learning how to glorify God. And so I have Brother Timberlake and Brother Jefferson are going to help me with that. But the challenge is yours. We have noonday Bible study every Wednesday. We have Bible study every Wednesday night at 7. And for those whose schedules are challenging, we have Sunday school. So as my pastor would say, you have no excuse. Our responsibility, as spoken by Jesus Christ, is to glorify our Father, which is in heaven. And you have to glorify him in the way that he called for you to glorify him, not the way I think. Not the way the world thinks that you ought to glorify him. We have to do it the way he said to. So that we can bring praise, honor, and glory and exalt his name. That at the name of Jesus, the world will begin to bow and confess Jesus Christ to the praise, honor, and glory of God the Father. It's not what I think. I don't try to outthink God. I read, I understand, I live according to his word. Not what I think about his word, but what his word teaches me. And God is challenging me. He said, Quan, I realize you are in a dark world. I understand that. But I put a light in you, and you now are the light of the world. I didn't say you were the light of the world. Jesus said you're the light of the world. So therefore, we're to do what? Let it shine. That we might draw all men to the God that is in us. Not to us, but to the God that is in us. To the praise, honor, and glory of God the Father. That's what it's all about.
stand with me. We're going home. I don't want to challenge anyone. You know, I don't like to compete for anything. But I wanted to give you what God gave me. You know, God is good. The same God that speaks to you is the same God that speaks to me. You know, I had written another sermon. The name of the sermon I'll preach one of these days was the Christian race. That's what I was going to preach today. Out of Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. And so I had put my feet up and Patrice to enjoy the football game last night. I said, because God has given me something. And don't you know, at halftime, I said, Lord, help me, Jesus. <laughs> of the game. <clears throat> With the Patriots and the Titans. God says, Boy, that's a nice sermon. <laughs> he said, but you ain't gonna preach. <laughs> the what? <He> said, what? <laughs> now, you could have, we could have had this conversation earlier in the evening. <laughs> you ain't had to be waiting all up in here on tip about 10 o'clock at night to be telling me. And God gave me glorifying God. He said, glorify him. He said, God, that's what you tell me. That's what I'm telling you. This is God's word for us as we go in 2020. And to glorify God is going to require me to do what? To step back and examine the life that I am living. To make sure that the life that I live is not I, but it's the God that is in me. So that others who don't know the Lord will have an opportunity know Jesus Christ for themselves. We all remember when we were not in the Lord. And I can't tell you how many people God put in my life, how much light he kept sending my way before Brother Glenn and I said, I believe. And I thank God for Jesus Christ. So today you're here. And I always tell people that you're never where you are by accident. God knew before you even got up this morning that you would be here. And God knew that the word that he gave me was for you to hear. The Bible says, now that you have heard the word, God holds you accountable for the word. Amen. So let me tell you how good God is. God gives us opportunity after opportunity to come to know him. I can't tell you how many times God sent people in my life. I used to style myself like a slot machine. Isn't that crazy? A slot machine is designed to pay out after so many turns or pulls of the hammer. So you go out and you insert a coin and you pull. It doesn't hit. So you put in another coin. It doesn't hit. But if you keep on putting coins in there, it will hit. What you don't know, so so you see, Michelle, I've sat there and put coin after coin after coin, and I didn't win. So in my frustration and the fact that my money is out, I leave. Now comes belief. <laughs> Knowing a sister needs a little something. And she puts in one coin. So what am I telling you? So that's a little parable God gave me. God says, Clyde, do you know how many people I put in your life? Person after person after person after person sowed a little seed in your life. And one day, That's the day I cried out. And I was faithful to God because God was faithful to me because he never stopped telling me the wages of sin is death. You come unto me. Come unto me, he said, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest for your soul. Today you're here. What a wonderful opportunity to start your new year off in a new way. People are always praying for a different ending 
but they keep starting in the same old place, hoping to finish in a different place. You want to finish in a different place? You must start in a different place. Today is a new day for you. You can start your life in Jesus Christ today. And in the moment that you confess the Lord, your ending has changed. All you have to do is confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe it in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. God said, I'll save you. I'll save you. Are you here today? And you would now confess the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Why don't you come and give your heart to God? Are you here today? Praise the Lord. And for those who are in Christ but may not be in a church family, and God has placed Mount Olive in your heart, we would like to invite you to come to be a part of Mount Olive. You can come by letter or discipleship experience or even watch here. If it's your heart's desire to join with us, then why don't you come that we might number you among the faithful here at Mount Olive. Are you here?